Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry for you because I'm not Catherine, and I give you uh, apologize. She's very suffering, unfortunately, for her. So I, I will try to present the talk that she prepared and that we prepare all together, in fact, on risk assessment of genetically modified mosquito for vector control. So, in fact, it is not a research problem. It is uh, an expertise that I will summarize in a few minutes here how we can use these new technology to fight against mosquitoes and where we can apply this new technology. Uh, only to show you that uh, if it is working... So sorry, the movie is not working, unfortunately. It is only to show you that uh, it was a spreading of uh, irradiated mosquitoes two weeks ago in uh, Chiapas province, for which the reality to, to spread mosquitoes is, no, is not a bottleneck. So only two years ago, it was very complex to have the capacity to spread in in a village or in a town, the, the mosquitoes, and it was necessary to open some can with the car. So here you have the spreading of the mosquitoes here from a drone, and you have the capacity with this drone to, in one hour, to, uh, to spread mosquito around at least one square kilometer. So this is the reality presently that is occurring in several countries, in Mexico, in Philippines, in uh, Guangzhou area in China. It is the reality that can be applied in some area to fight against mosquitoes using the irradiated mosquitoes. So a very old technology that emerged 60 years ago on several insects. So this technology can be used. But additional technology can be used also, and I thought the main objective of this for, for the French High Council of Biotechnology to evaluate the risk of a new technology to fight against mosquitoes in the field. So I will focus mainly on what are the criteria for the health and environment assessment of these modified mosquitoes. Of course, I will not insist on the diversity of uh, mosquitoes that we have, mainly that uh, two of them have been widely described by uh, Annabella, and two of them are very important and serious to transmit uh, the viruses. Another one has been described previously, Anopheles, to describe some parasites, and uh, or indigenous mosquitoes in France, that is Culex. We have a wide diversity of uh, mosquitoes. So uh, only to insist that the new tools to fight against mosquitoes are included into a global uh, system to fight uh, against mosquitoes. We don't have only one tool. We have several tools to fight against mosquitoes, and we don't have to forget that, that it is absolutely necessary to engage a new tool in a global strategy to fight against mosquitoes. When I show you the movie with uh, the, the drone, you, you, you saw that the community was located near the drone to, to be aware of what happened. Because they received some mosquitoes on the umbrella, and uh, it is very essential for the local population to be aware of the impact of the new technology and to discuss widely and to educate also the youngest to, to say what happened if we release some male mosquitoes in the field. So uh, concerning the mosquito fighting system, we have globally this uh, uh, two system opposite, self-sustaining system and self-limiting system with two objectives, population modification and population reduction or elimination. I insist on this definition because sometimes it is very important according to the transmission of disease because if we don't reduce enough the population, the disease will continue to be transmitted. Elimination is very difficult and complex 
to attend and we need to have global strategy to eliminate definitively from a local area before eradication, but no mosquito species have been eradicated by the strategy of uh, applied by human up to now. So the new technology are located in this part of the fight against mosquitoes concerning the growth and the regulators adulticide and larvicide system. Only to say you that in France presently we have only two molecules to fight against mosquitoes, one against adult, one against larvae and some resistance are occurring. So the, the three new tools that for which we discussed during the expertise from the IHCB uh, concern the sterile insect techniques, GMO or not, the cytoplasmic incompatibility using Warbachia, that is a bacteria that inside some mosquitoes, and the G-drive technique. But I will insist presently only on this sterile insect technique briefly to have an overview of what happened. Here on the screen you have the three technologies that allow to spread, like with the drone, some sterile male mosquitoes. So three global strategies are available presently. Some of them are ready to go, like the sterile insect technique by radiation, you saw that. The cytoplasmic incompatibility is also applied in some town in Philippines with a combination with irradiation of the male and the release of insect with a dominant lethal genetic system that we call riddle is also applied in some local area but there is no global license for the use of this system. So the limit and the common interest, in fact, of this technology concern the highly specific way to fight against insects. All the other systems that we have to fight against mosquitoes, excepted perhaps the, the bed with some, uh, the, the, net, the net bed with some uh, drug against uh, insect, can be more specialized, but most of the technology that we use for mosquitoes destroy several other arthropods. So these technology have the main advantage to be highly specific. The better efficacy is at a low density. It is a problem for this kind of technology because as you can see on this curve, uh, the, the main efficacy of the technology for the sterile insect is when you have a very low density of mosquitoes. If, we, if you want to use when you have in the, the wet season this kind of technology, you will spend a lot of money to produce a lot of mosquitoes to spread because the, you need to, to distribute at least 10 times more male to have a competition between the wild male and the release male. So it's very complex and expensive in these conditions to use this technology directly to apply in the field. It's also a bit complex to apply it uh, when you have an outbreak of disease, you want an immediate solution to drop the density of population of mosquitoes. But this technology is long-lasting technology in the field and you need at least several weeks before having a dropping of 80% of the population. So it is the, the main problem the, that we can have with this technology, but it is possible to use in the field in some specific con uh, condition. There is a, also another interest is to combine the technology, and uh, there is a possibility also to envelop and to embed the male mosquitoes with dengue virus or with a drug to fight against larvae, and these dengue virus can be transmitted to the female, and the female we put the dengue virus or the insecticide for the larvae in where she will put the eggs. So it is combined technology that are under development that can be very interesting also to use to reduce more drastically the population in the field. 
So the, the main constraint presently, it is not the speeding, it is probably the automation to produce the mosquitoes. It is here a farm that I visited two weeks ago in Mexico to produce some mosquitoes and to irradiate them. And it is a bit artisanal and it's a bit at low density. But it is the reality to produce this kind of male mosquito and to release in the field. So it is highly difficult. So uh, the main disadvantage is probably presently uh, a necessity for this kind of technology to have a long-term spreading and a continuous production for which we don't have always automation. <clears throat> so I, I will skip that to make this uh, short synthesis. Presently, three new technologies are under development. Some old technology are now in the field with uh, the irradiation of mosquitoes, it is possible, but it is highly difficult to produce in a way, and it is costly, so it is why it is not used at a, in, on a large area, but it is possible to use on some district and in some small part of a town. Gene drive techniques is under development, and it is not uh, self, uh, it is a self-sustaining technology, so there are some ethical components to, to solve before the spreading in the field. And uh, riddle technology has been used in some part in the world. It is a GMO, so there is also an authorization for GMO to release in the field before using this technology. We can see that uh, for Aedes albopictus, when this kind of mosquitoes arrive in France, this kind of technology could have been used particularly the irradiation of mosquitoes. Presently, it is more complex because we need to have, we have a wide area to, to survey. Perhaps Aedes aegypti that is surviving on Réunion Island should be a very good target to fight and to eliminate using the irradiation of mosquitoes. Thank you very much for your attention. Do we have uh, questions? I'm going to quickly start. I mean, you mentioned for the gene drive technique those ethical uh, concerns. How does the Conseil address those uh, ethical concerns? I mean, what's the process to uh, evaluate those uh, concerns? Uh, the, the process, what is indicated in the expertise of each EB, is it, it that uh, uh, we need to have uh, a compulsory system if we want to apply in the, the field. Or you have an antidote, or you have a system to a kind of conservatoire of uh, the strain that are existing in the field. But it is two ways for which we need to solve before using in the field. It is the two, two short parameters. But besides that, there is also a, a deep work with local population that is submitted to this kind of technology. And it is the hard work with the youngest and the oldest population to inform them carefully. Thank you. Pascal? Can you tell us more about this Haut uh, Conseil of the Biotechnology and uh, your recent report? Yes. Uh, Au Conseil des Biotechnologies, or the French High Council for Biotechnology, is uh, the agency, independent agency, to give some advice and authorization for GMO in the field or give some authorization for the GMO in laboratory. So there are two main duties to give some advice of the government to authorize GMO release in the field and mosquito but have a modification in the genome in the GMO, of course. And also for the laboratory, when you are in containment one, two, three, four, and that you are manipulating a GMO, the each CB needed to give some authorization. Thank you. There's a question on the left. Uh, hi, thank you for the talk. I was just wondering, can we uh, predict how likely it is to eliminate this population of mosquito, and if there is a chance like that, is there a risk of, uh, by eliminating the population of mosquito that transmit the, this disease, 
we somehow make it unbalanced, the ecological system, not for us human, but for other species? Thank you. Uh, thank you for this question. I, I will partially reply to you uh, because, in fact, when we look for the drugs that are used to, to fight against mosquitoes, none of these drugs were tested to look for the efficacy to reduce the human disease transmission. They are here to eliminate a population in the field, globally all the arthropods in the field that are sensitive to this drug are eliminated. But no test to say that according to the use of the field and the reduction of the population, we have a reduction of the transmitted diseases. No, it is not done. But it is a parameter that should be requested for this kind of technology. When we decrease using the technology of the male, the sterile male, you have only an elimination, local uh, reduction, sorry, a reduction of population. You don't have elimination of population. You have reduction. Reduction of 95%, 98%, but you can't eliminate. So, uh, and probably also with some drugs, it is the same. And we saw the South America uh, map that uh, Annabella presented using DDT in the field. So there are apparently no mosquitoes, apparently, but it is reduced. It is a local reduction. And up to a, a threshold, we have a reduction of uh, the transmission of the human disease. Thanks very much. Um, I think we'll have to stop here. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation and discussion.